Los Angeles, talk about a culture shock. Can you describe the, uh, it, what it was like going out there just, uh, just as a mood for you? I, I loved it. <clears throat> and I'm one of these people who's always found a, a siren call from California. I just think California is the most interesting and uh, gorgeous place in the country. So it was, it was an easy adjustment. It was, uh, yeah, I, I had such good luck in L.A. Every, nearly all the seeds I planted came up. I mean, just to recount, you're there approximately five years. You have more than 30 nominations for the Pulitzer, and you win 13 Pulitzers in a five-year period. Can you talk about how you beefed that place up, what you did, how you did it? At the time I arrived in L.A., the staff was in a funk because of the Staples affair. The paper had a CEO, Mark Willis, and a publisher, Catherine Downing, who had no experience in the newspaper business. And yet they were going to rebuild it and show the newspaper world how to do it. And one of the things that they did was to cut a secret deal with some developers who had developed the Staples Center, which is where the Lakers play and it's where the Democratic Convention was held in 2000. And the uh, secret deal was that the paper would publish a special issue of its Sunday magazine, which would be all about the new Staples Center. There would be nothing else in it. And the paper would sell ads in this, and the Staples people would also sell ads in it. Presumably, they'd go to their contractors and say, buy an ad. And of course, if they ever wanted to do more business with them, they would buy an ad. And they, would agree, and they agreed, the paper and Staples agreed to split the proceeds. Now, to people from outside the newspaper business, this might have seemed okay. But inside, you knew that you had broken one of the cardinal rules, which is right. that you don't go into business with the people you're covering. You know, you keep your distance and you remain independent of them. Right. And uh, so there was a, a near riot in the newsroom. And the this. reporters, uh, the staff didn't know the about it. The staff this. didn't know about it, no. And so when it came to light, uh, the staff went into rebellion. There was almost a visceral feeling wow. of uh, hatred there. And uh, this Staples affair was one of the things that contributed to the uh, decision on the part of the Times' owners to sell it. You know, they, it just wasn't being run properly and they didn't know how to run it. So they sold it. And uh, then being sold to an out-of-town company also lowered morale. So the paper morale was very low when I got there. And I felt that it was actually a whole lot better the, the quality of the paper than the staff felt. I think that mm -hmm. the ethical problems that had happened had caused them to think that this paper was really not, a, not as good as it should be. And yet I was reading it and I was finding things in it every day that were excellent. Uh, you could put them in a journalist, journalism textbook, they were so good. So I knew there was a lot to work with. There was a ton of talent there. And the one big change I had to make in terms of personnel is I, I had to make a lot of editing changes and I brought in a lot of editors. And I, I wasn't able to find very many strong editors on the West Coast. This, is, uh, this won't be taken well by my friends in the West, but there really are more good editors in the East. And I had to bring in a lot of people from the East. And we laughed about it because all of them, including me, became California stereotypes. We all got a convertible. <laughs> We all got shades, we got hot tubs, and, and it, was, it was a second childhood for us, and, uh, and it was just a blast. There, it's hard to summarize 13 Pulitzers. Is there something that you, it's also, as, as Dean Bacay was saying earlier, uh, the spread of the types of Pulitzers in the different areas of the paper, different departments mm -hmm. and things. It wasn't just investigative reporting, it wasn't just Washington. And, and of course, I know it culminates in in uh, 2005 with winning five Pulitzers uh, in a single year. Only one other paper has ever won five in, or more in a single year. Well, the, the talent base was strong Already. Uh, in, ter uh, in, in the ranks of the ro reporters and writers. I mean, there were right. any number of people there who, who have the talent to win a Pulitzer. And we put a lot of emphasis on the editing and the polishing of those stories that uh, that were Pulitzer worthy. And we also 
put a lot of emphasis on investigative work. We, we beefed up the investigations in the Washington Bureau. We also did the same in California. And some of the things, some of the stories I, I paid a lot of attention to. But the ones, in a way, the ones that tell you the paper is getting good are the ones that come out of the departments without any help from me. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, the Business News Department did one on, it was called the Walmart Effect. Oh, yeah. And it was a series about how Walmart really works and what effect it has on other people. And it was exquisitely fair. It wasn't uh, an attack on Walmart. It, it really showed you the complexity of it. It was very interesting reading. And that came out of the Business News Department pretty much without any coaxing from me or our editors outside that department. You know, when you got a paper that's doing that type of work right. in all of its, in its departments, uh, you've got a juggernaut going.